My rhymes are twisted around your mind like licorice. So come and get a hit of this. Like a hit and run, son, I have you thinking I'm four minus three, the one. So come listen to this poetic redemption as I attempt you to use more than just your imagination. Symbolic, spitting silky tonic with no promise to profit on a one-way mission to make knowledge more common. That's my little intro. Um, so I want to thank you guys for coming out tonight. Um, I know it's cold and the wind is so disrespectful out there. Um, disrespected my jacket, my scarf, my hat. I uh, wish I had some gloves. But um, anyway, I'm getting to the next piece. They say your eyes are a window into your soul. Well, I don't shut my eyes when I look at you, so why can't you see? That I'm not your stereotypical black woman and I can't be what you want me to be. You see, they teach you how to generalize and idealize through someone else's eyes until you can't realize the reality of your own situation. We blame them, Whitey, for oppression. Maybe we have an obsession with our own stunted progression. Maybe it's our idiomatic expressions captured by the rap succession while school's in session, but damn, I'm digressing. See, although my skin has bearing to my kin, it doesn't begin to compare what I hold within. You see, we black women are similar, but never the same. We change at close range supply and demand like the New York Stock Exchange. But you fail to see what we have in common. You only see differences, which become hindrances, not allowing us to gain so we become lifeless. So I might just let you know what's on my mind, but this is more than a punchline, so maybe I should rewind. Back to the times of Bacon's rebellion, see both whites and blacks were living in this hell when we decided to rebel against the rich. The rich got pissed and said, we can't have this shit. So they divided the poor, gave the whites a little bit more, and it'd be another 300 years before we black settled the score. We stick to this word, revolution, as if it's the final solution to our problems instead of trying to solve them. Gil Scott Heron stated the revolution will not be televised. Well, maybe the real revolution will never materialize unless we as people decide we need that U-N-I-T-Y. See, I gotta let you know, we're not gonna be granted immunity in this European economic community. However, we need to take advantage of every opportunity we have. And no, this does not mean begging the white man. It means denying some of those things that gleam, waking up for that dream being on the NBA team or singing with the Supremes. Now, I don't mean to be extreme, but I'm coming out of my scenes, I can pretend not to hear the screams of my dying culture, but what if we're the biggest ones that hurt us? See, I try to be the black and nothing but the black, so God help me be black, I'll talk black, I'll walk black, I even roll with a black pack of people. But I realize I'm still alone despite my black pack. And I don't have to figure this out on my own because my own people tell me through their acts they attack because I'm not black enough. Well, tough. I can't linger on the small stuff. Cause if I did, I'd be a spotless squid operating only using my id and every time I slid, my own people would try to get rid of me. And I would never get my bachelor's degree. I would still be trying to learn my ABCs. It's not easy as one, two, three to disagree with what your community believes. Especially if they happen to be the bourgeoisie. It gets worse and I swear it's a curse. Not only am I from NYC and Cali, but I have some white in me. And my own people reject me as if I was an Africanized honeybee. I say, yo, when I float, but even worse, I played water polo. <laughs> so it's a phrase, tore up from the floor up, or is it toe up from the flow up? You see, I just can't get enough of these words that blur on my page every time a tear fades. I'm trying to evade my untrue friends. I have to give what they said, time to settle in. And then I need time to mend. This inevitable trend of how we condescend towards each other because we don't fit in. But damn it, that's it, I can't take it, so I'm just gonna tell you. With your eyes open or closed, you should see. Maybe I'm not black enough, but maybe being black is just not enough for me. <laughs> yeah. The childhood she envied, the childhood she tasted, Still fresh on her lips, she remembers the sound of before, the smell of dark wooded hallways and quick steps. Before she could answer his knock, he had already turned the knob and picked the lock. And by now, he's in full pursuit, but she won't let him catch her. Be fi fo fum And sometimes he let her think she won, but when he finally caught her, laughed her. And then they danced. She'd stand on his toes, and no matter how big she got, no matter how old, he'd always sing. The elephant carries a great big truck and never packs it with clothes. He has no lock and he has no key, but he carries it wherever he goes. And still, she didn't know it then, but that was a lesson etched in genetic code, a lesson she would find out much, much later when he left her 
Empty. Empty like the silence of two years. Empty like when she disputed being boy crazy through her tears. Dad, the boys don't even notice me. And if you believe I'm boy crazy, then you really didn't know me. Empty like his anger when he shot back, of course I know you, I'm your father. And if it looks like a duck, and it quacks like a duck, and it has web feet, what is it? Only emptied him later to find out that it was her boy cousin who touched her crazy, the nephew who would rather break his unwanted toys than let her play with them. Empty. Like when she was signed the do not resuscitate order on her 22nd birthday while holding her daddy's hand at 12 a.m. in the same hospital she was born in. You know, sometimes when she skates into oncoming traffic or touches her hair, she can smell him, his danger, the concoction of wood, rust, and oil. He was more than her superhero. He was more than her Popeye, more than some coach on the sidelines. He was the hope of victory and the finish line. Oh. If my heart could exist, Outside my chest, you'd already have it. If I could, I have your scent woven into fabrics. Fingertips to back, I exist. Collapse between breaths, bodies pressed into puzzle, perfect. Undress in excellence so I can view you. My lips an eraser for each insecurity. How could you be anything less than confident? Because if love had a color, it would be your skin tone. I hear love echo as you spin on my axis. Your eyes an untouched pool of sparkle. And damn, baby, I just want to go for a swim. I'm in love, that secret love, that kind of love you can't shout from rooftops or post on Facebook love. <laughs> Activist love, we refuse to be consumed by the masses and doomed by the man, because fuck consumerism type love. <laughs> Non-possessive, non-traditional, no titles to hold us back love, that too far away, out of state love, that I don't do PDA. But we PDA anyway, love. Who told you to fuck me like that? What do I gotta do? What do I gotta steal? Who do I have to kill to get you all to myself for once? Palm pressed to neck, I breathe. My lip, my name off your lips is a siren song. Convincing me to beach myself on your shore. Your name off my lips is an oar I row. I am the wreck abandoned on your tongue, spitting out my poor excuse for body armor like sunflower husk we love. Freedom finds me in how secure you are when you say you're mine, knowing that technically I'm not. <laughs> Under my skin is a clan of Jamaicans chanting church hymns. Under my skin lives a white atheist. I sneak peeks at this random draw of cards, mostly hearts and spades. Like, damn, you're already black and woman. Did you really have to be gay? A secret society of inside jokes. A constant contradiction, I'm conflicted. Just when I think I know myself, it switches. Basking in secrets parents prohibit. Sit and sift as you rift through my temples. Ashamed, I don't pray anymore. No faith in any one thing. I won't stay one place anymore. My mom keeps asking me if I'm haunted. Kissing the forehead of my shadow, she just wants me close. But I wake up just to put the sun to bed. Drenched in moonlight, mom, I hang on to memories like hot clay holds sunshine. I remember the hospital at 22. Pressing my nose to his neck in hopes of holding on to his scent, sometimes I still smell him. I can see his laughter fill the room, but the truth is, it's easier to write poems about him when really they should all be about you. Because if it wasn't for you, mom, Dad would have named me Oom. <laughs> U-H-N-N. -N. He keeps saying it's Swedish. And I can still see him parade around the room as he taunts me with it like, Oom Davis. And he signed all my birthday cards that way. <laughs> that was the thing about him. I couldn't help but laugh with this man. 
I couldn't help but love him and love him I did, all in. Even with the part that doesn't forgive. Even that part that's still empty since he left, yet I'm a rebel in disregard. A girl who dresses in boy clothes because I refuse to feel uncomfortable. My skin is a bed of secrets. Come lying in. A dangerous game of hide and seek, two sides of a dichotomy. I'm still trying to live up to what my name means, Simone. One who hears or one who is heard. A time to speak and a time to listen. A natural balance to all things. Mom used to say that there's a time and a place for everything. Well, my time is now. It's past time for me to find my place. And maybe my parents didn't give me the best head start, but my job is to use these tools, this heart, this mouth, this spade. Play the hell out of this hand. Ain't no abstinence, only education. I'm fucking here for a reason. So when they say that I'm mixed up, I tell them I prefer stirred, <laughs> but not shaken. <laughs> like, friends, when you're down, I come to your rescue. I become embedded within your skin, pulsating on hidden temples. Yes, you make Miracles. With your intense passion and spiritual caverns, I haven't heard such art. I can see us taking walks amongst the planets, spinning on Saturn, jumping on Jupiter, and drinking in taverns, vainly just blabbering, because just like the song, nothing even matters. Except what is expressed through natural sense and herbal essence, I sense your presence. Blindfolded through awkward sessions of sexual confessions of fucking obsessive compulsive disorder. With angelic consistency that breaches heaven and releases dopamine through me and to everyone around me. With your high levels of toxicity, you could get an atheist to date you religiously. And that's why I get on my knees for you. I use poetry to talk to you. Pretend I can sing, but I can't really sing, so I'll just hum for you. And when I go to poetry slams, they're really revivals, breathing new life into my soul, seeking scriptures read from your eyes. I can read you like a Bible. And when you speak to me, you pull me from the mangled matter of my soul and untangle myself from self-destruction. So when I lie next to you, I smell heaven beside you. So heaven must be incredible, delectable, because every atom in your body is adorable. I adore you. Build a second tower of Babel just to reach you. I want to please you. Praise you the only way I know how to through poetry. Word combinations unsought and songs untoned until I beat your voice into my eardrum. I am so in love. But then I lost you. I started standing still. I mean, marching in place. I mean, spacing through time. I lost my goddamn mind and never found all the Reese's pieces. I switched my senior thesis to loving you. You see, I loved you so much that I gave you my heart, but I did not give you permission to creep into these dreams and sleep in my lining so you could be there when I burst at the seams. Seems like selfish is all the selfless get. So is it real? I don't know. Everything tells me it's gotta be. You got me right where I ought to be. Your love fills my cups, never watery. Concentrate while I contemplate. That's why it's gotta be real. I gotta reveal my Achilles heel. Cause your presence is the fabric of my essence, the patchwork of my heaven. So keep my heart guessing and bench pressing to impress you. It doesn't take an angel to know that heaven sent you or that I was meant for you. So don't tempt me to take it old school. Cause I will let this love go like the Egyptian now flows. Plentiful. And what can I do but be in love with you from a distance? <clears throat> Holding hands across the Mason Dixon. As we take turns refusing to truly let it be over. And I wonder, how long can we prolong this, my beautiful Casanova? <laughs> All my life, I've searched for a soulmate, thinking at times it wasn't possible until I met you. And I know that we weren't always friends and we haven't always been cool. But I do believe you're one of those people that'll be a part of my life forever. We got issues. Okay, maybe, maybe I got issues. But our hearts never gave up, even though we both fronted as if we did. And at times, I've wished that one of us was a boy, so I could give you all that you deserve and be exactly what you need. And with this decree, I plead on my knees to the stars above that watch over me like 
Watch over her too. Because if anything happened to her, I don't know what I would do. If I could only rearrange the cards I played, if I could only take back words and replace them with what I didn't say, I promise I would never walk away again. Sometimes it makes me think, what did I do in the past life that caused me to find someone that compliments me in every way, but not have the ability to stay or work things out or say I'm sorry or just let go? But she just doesn't finish my sentences. She dispenses them with that same intonation before I do. And when she breathes out, I breathe in. And when she speaks, I start to feel again. And when I start to forget about us, I kneel again the same way I was that night we first connected. I was a hot ass man. I confessed about how much my family hurt me, how I didn't think this world was made for me, how I thought my cousin was gonna rape me, how I would scream and no one would hear me, and how I lied to myself saying it was just a dream. So I wish I could find a way to successfully kill me. And that's why I live life recklessly. But she carries me with no complaints. And when my spirit starts to wane, she begs the wind in my frame to keep moving. While I write in print, her presence moves smooth like script. She tattoos in Sharpie, her energy on my soul. So when I'm cold and broken, she becomes a furnace making me whole. And I have no idea what I could have shown her to make her want to hang out with a crazy motherfucker like me. <laughs> I think it's funny how we laugh at the dumbest shit and how we talk so long one night with the car lights on. We had to ghost ride and like push the whip. I'm talking like push mobile status. And when I'm typing a text message, just by my smirk cupcaking, she knows it's one of those. She knows what mood I'm in just by the way I answer the phone. And even when I'm trying to cover it up, she imposes that she knows. So let it out, Simone, let it flow. She says it's okay to cry, I still cry sometimes. Everything is gonna be all right, and if it isn't, then fuck them. You don't need them, we'll kill them. You're beautiful and bright in every way, and if they can't see that, then they don't deserve you anyway. I see it in you, and you make my heart sing. And I know you're looking at me like all your life, all your life, you're like 27 years old. It's the principle, I'm saying though. It seems like I spent these decades in purgatory to find someone true when I can't tell you how many other best friends I've been through. She's peeled my fingers off of plenty of pill bottles and temporary blues. So to my soulmate, know this. If I get mad over us, it's because I care. If I peer hurt over us, it's because I'm in pain. And if our friendship ever fails again, I don't regret a moment of it except the end. So till then, I'm gonna give you more hugs than you can bear. Always to remind me that if I'm lucky, I'll find a partner with half the passion we share. Wow. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful.